Good morning everybody, welcome to this morning's worship. Your story is part of God's story. Let's join together as the people of God and celebrate who we are in Christ, ready to share God's love with everyone we meet, knowing that each one of us is God's treasured possession. Let us pray. Amazing God, your story is written on paper, etched into our minds and on our hearts, enacted in our living and our loving, and displayed in our words and our deeds. We adore you and we want others to do the same, but first they need to hear your story and how our story touches your story. We want others to know you as we know you, to be amazed as we are amazed, to adore you as we do. We know you love each and every person. May telling our story reveal that truth to those we meet and greet in every part of our lives. May our story resound with praise and adoration, for you are the God we adore. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Father God, it saddens our hearts to see great suffering in our people in this world. We bring to mind all those in our locality who find themselves in a hard place. We especially pray for those who suffer physically with illness or mentally with depression and anxiety. Lord, come breathe on these people by your Holy Spirit and bring great love and hope and joy through us, your church. Help us to minister to others in the strength of your spirit and work in unity together. May we shine your glorious light into the darkness and remain steadfast and true to you. Lord, it disturbs us when we see us leaders embracing division instead of unity, pursuing wealth instead of justice and concealing lies instead of speaking the truth. We lift all those in significant leadership to you. Come guide their thoughts, cover their actions and renew their minds. Protect them from the influence of the realms of darkness and sweep away any corruption. We pray that you would lay a new path of righteousness in troubled nations and lands. Father, it is disturbing to see the difference between rich and poor wisening. We lift all those in poverty to you. Come bring minds of vision, healing and restoration. Speak into lives so that we might pray, play our part in changing the world. We ask all this in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Jesus went around all the towns and villages. He taught in the synagogues, preached the good news about the kingdom and healed people with every kind of disease and sickness. As he saw the crowds, his heart was filled with pity for them because they were worried and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. So he said to his disciples, the harvest is large, but there are few workers to gather it in. Pray to the owner of the harvest that he will send out workers to gather in this harvest. Jesus called to his twelve disciples together and gave them authority to drive out evil spirits and to heal every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, called Peter, and his brother Andrew, James and his brother John, the sons of Zebedee, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon, the patriot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed Jesus. These twelve men were then sent out by Jesus with the following instructions. Do not go to any Gentile territory or any Samaritan towns. Instead, you are to go to the lost sheep of the people of Israel. Go and preach. The kingdom of heaven is near. 
heal the sick, bring the dead back to life, heal those who suffer from dreaded skin diseases and drive out demons. You have received without paying, so give without being paid. Do not carry any gold, silver or copper money in your pockets. Do not carry a beggar's bag for the journey or an extra shirt or shoes or a stick. A worker should be given what he needs. When you come to a town or village, go in and look for someone who is willing to welcome you and stay with him until you leave that place. When you go into a house, say, peace be with you. If the people in that house welcome you, let your greeting of peace remain. But if they do not welcome you, then take back your greeting. And if some home or town will not welcome you or listen to you, then leave that place and shake the dust off your feet. I assure you that on the judgment day, God will show more mercy to the people of Sodom and Gomorrah than to the people of that town. Listen, I'm sending you out just like sheep to a pack of wolves. You must be as cautious as snakes and as gentle as doves. Watch out, for there will be men who will arrest you and take you to court, and they will whip you in the synagogues. For my sake, you will be brought to trial before rulers and kings to tell the good news to them and to the Gentiles. When they bring you to trial, do not worry about what you are going to say or how you will say it. When the time comes, you will be given what you will say. For the words you will speak will not be yours. They will come from the spirit of your father speaking through you. Men will hand over their own brothers to be put to death, and fathers will do the same to their children. Children will turn against their parents and even have, have them put to death. Everyone, everyone will hate you because of me, but whoever holds on to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town and run away to another, I assure you that you will not finish your work in all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. Now that we have been put right with God through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. He has brought us by faith into this existence, into this experience of God's grace in which we now live. And so we boast of hope we have of sharing God's glory. We also boast of our troubles because we know that trouble produces endurance. Endurance brings God's approval and his approval creates hope. This hope does not disappoint us for God has poured out his love into our hearts by means of the Holy Spirit who is God's gift to us. For when we were still helpless, Christ died for the wicked at the time that God chose. It is difficult, it's a difficult thing for someone to die for a righteous person. It may even be that someone might dare to die for a good person. But God has shown us how much he loves us. It was while we were still sinners that Christ died for us. Jesus went out telling people all around that the kingdom of God had come into their reach. But as he shared this good news to them, he noticed that many of them had so many problems to deal with, so many ailments and disabilities to contend with. It sounds very probable that, like people in our time today, they were worried about so much. They didn't know where to turn. They had so much to do in their lives with no time to do it. If we go out somewhere and we watch people bustling around, if we listen to people talking on their phones or hopping on and off buses, then we can see that there is little opportunity for people to stop and think about what they hear, let alone spend time thinking through whether they wish to respond to God's invitation to be counted as one of his own children. The harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. The Lord of the harvest is to send out labourers into his harvest. We sometimes mention this saying of Jesus when we celebrate our harvest festival and think about the spiritual side to harvesting. 
sowing the seeds of God's word in people's hearts, bearing good fruit in our lives and in the lives of the people around us, and then reaping those ripe for harvest for God's kingdom. Jesus and his close band of disciples, who would later be known as apostles, had been sharing the word of God. They had sown the seed. People having taken on board God's word in their lives had begun to show the love of God growing within them and changing them. But without people to follow up and care for them, they might not make it to harvest. They were far too taken up with how they were going to live the next day. Jesus was calling for people who had already begun to follow him to go out into their communities and nurture them, to care for them and help them with whatever burden they were carrying. They could offer a listening ear to what was going on in their lives, to try and find an answer to their questions about their relating to God and to one another in these new times. Jesus called his 12 disciples to go out and do this work initially. Because the workers were so few in number, they had a very hard task to do. What they were doing was to come to the aid of those whom Jesus had described as harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. To this end, the disciples were given authority by Jesus to drive out impure spirits and to heal every disease and illness. They were sent out with these instructions. Firstly, they were to preach that the kingdom of heaven had come near. Then they were to back it up in their actions and follow through with the things that they had been equipped by Jesus to do. Heal those who were ill, raise the dead, cleanse those who had leprosy, drive out demons. They were not to make money out of these abilities either. They had received these abilities without charge and so they were to make use of them free of charge. This did not mean that they were not to be supported by the communities they visited. They were instructed not to take any coins or extra clothes with them as they went. As Jesus said, for the worker is worth their keep. This all paints an ideal picture. It sounds like heaven itself. It is the kingdom of God in their midst. However, Jesus is not under any kind of illusion that everyone will receive their message well nor will they receive them personally with open arms. He warned them, I am sending you out like sheep among wolves. One wolf could cause a lot of trouble if it wandered into the field the sheep were in. More than one wolf would play havoc, resulting in much loss of life. Their mission isn't going to be plain sailing. Their task is not going to be easy. Kings and political leaders, as well as religious authorities, would demand them to give an account for what they said and did. They would be arrested and have to give evidence. Yet Jesus still does not want them to worry about this happening. He assures them that the Holy Spirit will give them the words to say when the time is right. They will be discouraged by the fact that even those most close to them their own family members even, will denounce them, betray them and have them put to death on account of Jesus. They will be hated by everyone who rejects Jesus and his message. We are told that God will be the one to deal with those who oppress the followers of Jesus and reject God's message brought to them in the person of Jesus and through the mouths and action, actions of Jesus' followers. When people have become so full of pride in their own ability to live on their own terms without God, when their God is their prosperous living and they disregard the problems of the poor, they are actually rejecting Jesus and his disciples as well as the message about the kingdom of God coming into their midst. Having rejected God's invitation to them to come into his kingdom, they cannot be surprised that God will turn away from them. As Jesus' followers today, we have been commissioned to join in with God's harvest, sowing the seed of God's word, nurturing spiritual growth and tending to the problems being experienced by those being grown into the kingdom. We are set with the task of helping bring in the harvesting for the Lord. However, not all of us have a clear picture of how we can help or where we can be of use or what we can do practically. Yes, we can follow Jesus, 
but we feel ill-suited to spiritual gardening. We can sow the seed of God's word in many ways. We can give our testimony to Jesus acting in our life and tell of our gratitude to him. We can pick up on themes in films or books or the newspapers where Jesus would turn hatred and destruction into acts of love and creativity. We can tell Jesus' story without using any words at all. Someone has once given the good advice, preach the gospel at all times and if necessary, use words. People can read our lives through our actions and the way we love other people. We don't always have to use words. Jesus had compassion because the people were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. He looked to their problems and what was holding them back in life from responding to the word of God. He saw the things that made them harassed and helpless and felt for them. He was disturbed by the things that disturbed them most. When Jesus equipped his disciples with all sorts of abilities to sort out people's lives, he was showing his acceptance of them just as they were, however complicated their individual situations. Nothing was beyond his ability to deal with. He wanted each and everyone who heard the message of the kingdom of God to be able to respond to it and become a part of it. We can identify some of the harassed and helpless in our communities for whom life is complicated, if not by their problems, then by their prejudices of others. We may not feel we can sort out their problems ourselves as individuals. However, we may join up with others to support them and bring healing where there is disease and dis-ease. We can become churches where we can become where we can be welcoming and accepting and places of sanctuary to those who feel rejected by society. We can support food banks, homeless shelters and become listening ears to those with mental health problems or who feel overwhelmed by the problems they are experiencing. We can show that we stand for them when they fight for justice and together, as well as individually, we can see that justice is done. If we feel ill-suited to what Jesus has called us to do, then we must realise that whatever we are called to do, the Holy Spirit will equip us with the ability and the means to do it. We simply step out in faith using what we already can do and leave it to Jesus and the Spirit to do the rest. As individuals, we may feel overwhelmed by the number of problems people are experiencing and feel we have, all we have to offer is but a drop in the ocean. Not everyone is called to solve everyone's problems. Everyone is called to show love and offer a heartfelt welcome into the kingdom of God to the people we come into contact with. What each one of us can do best, perhaps, is to take away our gaze from ourselves and whether we are up to the job and go out into the places our lives take us day by day and get to know the people who are all around us. When we listen to what they have to tell us about themselves and about what is happening in their lives, then we can become interested in them as people whom Jesus loves and cares about. We can then learn to support them and help them through life in this world by prayer and showing them through our lives what Jesus is about in his kingdom in the here and now. Go out into your daily life with the comfort and assurance of knowing that Jesus goes with you. However, go out also with his warning and timely advice to discern the motives of the people you meet. Be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves. Be wise and act sensibly in all things. Then you will be able to stand tall and stand your ground and make a real difference wherever life takes you. Let us pray. Transforming God, as we go from here, may we be full of your amazing story, wanting to share it with those we meet, so that more lives may be transformed. Go with us, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen.
together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. Uh